Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> This time from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, remember that these days your family needs plenty of good, nourishing food. And of course, it's mostly the flavor of what you serve that tempts them to eat all they need. Well, flavor is something that wholesome parquet margarine certainly has. Delicate, appetizing flavor never possible in old-time margarine. You see, parquet margarine is the modern margarine made by Kraft. And it's outstanding because it tastes so deliciously good, whether you serve it at the table or use it for baking and pan frying. Yes, if you haven't tried parquet, you just can't know how wonderfully good modern margarine can be. Another thing, parquet margarine is good for you. It's a wholesome, nourishing energy food. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. Best of all, parquet margarine is economical, and that's important these days when we're all saving every bit we can to buy defense stamps and bonds. Why not try a pound or two of delicious parquet margarine tomorrow? Yes, just ask your dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's made by Kraft. Now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who is about to visit a local furniture store in search of a new bed as a surprise gift for his niece, Marjorie. Now I like that pink canopy bed in the window, Leroy. How about buying that one for Marjorie? Oh, no. Who'd help him put the top down on nice nights? Yes. Leroy, that isn't a convertible bed. Uh, let's go in. I know the owner of this store. Well, well, if it ain't my old friend, Chuck Morton P. Gildersleeve. Hello, Spencer. Yes, uh, Slepperman. <laughs> my, my, you're a sight for good eyes. Yes. Why, you're the very motion picture of hell. Yes. In fact, a double feature. Yes. <laughs> and don't tell me this is little Theodore. I won't. This is little Leroy. My, my, how you've jumped out. Well, I remember when I used to bounce you on my knees, sonny boy. Yes, in about one more year, he'll be able to return the favor, Slepperman. <laughs> Guilty, my pal. You took the words right out of my bridge work. Yes. <laughs> well, let's not stand around on our ceremonies. Will you have a chair? Or were you thinking of buying a Devonport? Well, we, we were interested in beds. Something in a little uh, slumber number. <laughs> oh, hachi pati. Just follow me, please. Okay. Say, Uncle, what's the name of this chair that the man is sleeping in? Uh, that's a Morris chair. Oh, hello, Morris. Hello, la, la, la. Slepperman's kid brother. He's 40 years old and still a problem child. Gee, what kind of a clock is this, Unc? Uh, that's a grandfather's clock, Leroy. And don't open it. There are no grandfathers inside. Well, here we are. I'm telling you confidentially, Trucky, when it comes to sleeping furniture, this store's wide awake. Uh, yes, yes, I know. <laughs> Leroy, quit jumping up and down on that bed. Ah, leave him to be guilty. Let the boy have fun. All right, so he sp suppose he does break a couple of springs. So I'll put it on your bill. Yeah. <laughs> Young man, come down from there. Oh, Cancel Mort, I was only making a test hop. Yes. <laughs> what a kitty, huh? He's a regular Mickey Looney. Mickey Looney. <laughs> Guilty? What kind of a bed would you like to buy if I'm not taking too much priority? Yes. It's for Marjorie, you know, Leroy's sister. She's away at a Red Cross training school, and Leroy and I thought we'd surprise her by fixing up her bedroom. What an uncle. An angel without wings. Yeah, I was grounded. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had an uncle like you got, Leroy. Uh, Leroy, Mr. Slepperman is talking. Leroy, where are you? Oh, young man, come out of that grandfather's clock. <laughs> oh. Okay. See, that makes a keen place for hiding. Go ahead, Leroy. Keep it up. I know another keen place for hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too harsh on the boy, Trocky. Remember, you were a pickaninny once yourself. Yes. 
Look, Sam, do you want me to make up my mind about that bed now, or would you rather have me sleep on it? Okay. How about this creation in solid mahogany with a waterfall design? It's very excruciating. Yeah. I don't know. It looks a little too stodgy. Stodgy is the latest trend. Yeah. Gee, why don't you buy this dandy double-deck bunk bed for Marjorie, Uncle? No, my boy. What we want is something dainty and feminine, like, uh, say, that pink canopy model in the window. Ah, now you're talking with gas. Well, what's cooking with the bed? <laughs> Come on, come on. We can step into the window and give it a closer inspection. Yeah, come on, Leroy. Get away from that folding bed before it traps you. Coming, Uncle Mort. Right up here, Guilty. Careful passing that statue. Inhale. Thank you. Yeah. And look at that bed. Beautiful, ain't it? Uh, I'm telling you, this is a bed of roses. It is? Yes. And it's her own exclusive design. Yeah, whose? My daughter, Roses. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she certainly did a splendid job. Is it as comfortable as it looks? Then just try it. Lay right down. Go ahead. Take a sample snooze. Yeah, I will, Sam. Ah, uh, yes. Feels very soft. <laughs> you see, you float around like you're 99% pure. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? It's got a deep sleep mattress, and it's got a double box springs. And I know something else it's got, Unc. Yeah? What's that, Leroy? It's got half the people in town staring in the window at you, too. What? Oh, yeah, come on. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Silly thing for me to do. If, say, Sam, how much is that bed? Well, just the way it stands with that beautiful speed match uh-huh. spread, I'm asking, uh, hmm, and it cost me, uh, hmm, but I'll let you have it for... Hmm, one price, $120. $120, eh? Well, I wasn't figuring on spending quite that much, but, hmm. See, uh, how much will you give me in trade for Marjorie's present bed? Well, it's pretty old. How do you know? You haven't seen it. Well, I have a very vivid imagination. Yeah. He's right. Well, it must be, hmm, 50 years old. 50? Why, Leroy, it's at least 150. A very graceful four-poster, Slepperman. Really an antique. I'm sorry, but what you people call antiques is by me strictly secondhand. But this is really better than secondhand. Yeah, it must be sixth or seventh hand. Yep. Leroy, you get back in the grandfather's clock. Now, Sam, I'll let you in on a little secret. According to an unconfirmed rumor, that bed was slept in by George Washington. Recently? It, huh? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Gildy. Suppose you make me a price for that old bed. Uh, fine. Now, let me see. Uh, how about $20? $20? You're a hard man, Gildingsleeve. Hard? Why, that's pretty soft for you. Well, it's a deal. Shake. And now that it's set, I don't mind saying that I would have gone as high as $25. Oh, you would, eh? Well, I don't mind confessing, Sammy, old kid, that I would have taken as low as $10. (laughs) Uh, Hello? No, Marjorie's out of town. I'll tell her you called. Who is this? Uh, John? Uh, which John? Oh, you must be a new John. Yeah. Uh, goodbye. Uh, John Lewis. Uh, oh, Bertie. Come as quick as I can. Yes, Mr. Gilsey. Uh, which is today's stack of messages for Marjorie? The little one, the big, thick powder from yesterday. I never saw anything like it. That phone is busier than a burglar in a blackout. Everybody wants Marjorie. Yes, and it's worse when I'm here all alone. Hardly no time to do the cleaning or the cooking. I'm busy with my social secretary. Yeah. There's only one thing I hope. What's that, Bertie? That Miss Marjorie will be able to read all my writing on them messages. Why? Because I can't. Yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, you take care of the rest of them, Bertie. I want to see if those furniture men have the new bed set up yet. Ah, oh, hello, Leroy. Hello, Uncle Mort. Yeah, hello, men. I see you've removed the old bed and have the new one all put together already. Oh, yeah. Uh, Morris is testing it now. How is it, Morris? Well, you see? It's okay. Uh, come on, Morris. Oh, look at him in the arms of Orpheus. It, you mean Morpheus. Orpheus is the music god. If that's music, well... Morris but... Schlepperman, get up. I know what'll wake him. Hey, Morris, time to go to bed. Uh, it is. I'm coming, friend. Wait for me. That Morris should hibernate for the winter. Say, doesn't that bed look grand? Oh, Bertie, come on in here. Call me, Mr. Gill, please. Well, ain't that the cutest looking little bed? Yeah. I can hardly wait to see Miss Marge climb in and hit the hay. This bed costs $120, Bertie, and that ain't hay. <laughs> oh, you better see who's at the door, Bertie. 
Yes, if it ain't one thing, it's the same thing. <laughs> Throw that bedspread across, Leroy, so we can get an idea of how it looks made up. Okay. That's it, thanks. Why, it's as pretty as a new $20 bill. There's six $20 bills. There's a Miss Van Scudder to see you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Van Scudder? I wonder who that can be. Well, I better go see. Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, yes? I'm Patricia Van Scudder, the interior decorator. I'm to redo Marjorie's bedroom. Uh, already? Why, Leroy and I just finished a redo job five minutes ago. Oh, there must be some mistake. I received a letter from Marjorie yesterday asking me to decorate her room. Oh, I see. Well, Marjorie didn't know about our little effort. It was to be a surprise. <laughs> well, if it's anything like the usual man's idea of a girl's room, it's probably more of a shock than a surprise. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> hadn't we better look at the room in question now? Oh, yes, of course. Excuse me. Uh, this way, Miss Van Scudder. <laughs> uh, right in here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my nephew, Leroy. Leroy, this is Miss Van Scudder. Hello. How do you do? Well, I'm genuinely surprised. Uh, Why, this is a charming, charming room. Oh, you like it? Yes. Why, I can hardly believe you two did this. It's really quite lovely. Well, all we did was to buy it. Quiet, Leroy. Let's hear Miss Van Scudder. Well, really, I'd leave it just as it is, except for one thing. Yeah, and what's that? The bed. <laughs> but that's the only thing... Uh, Leroy, please. <laughs> yeah. What did you say, Miss Van Scudder? The bed. Uh, wrong? Oh, but definitely. The color clashes with everything else. Uh, and the style. <gasps> oh, that style. Yeah, some style, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> yes, quite horrible. Uh, now, see here, Miss Van Scooter. Why, why, to put it in this room is almost as bad as mixing empire with rococo. Uh, hey, Uncle, what's empire and rococo? Shh, I think there are a couple of racetracks. <laughs> I see. Uh, then you don't think that Marjorie would like the bed, eh? I know she wouldn't be happy in this overgrown bassinet. Who's a... Oh, she wouldn't, eh? <laughs> no. However, I'd be happy to go out and find you the proper bed for this room. You would? Well, maybe that would solve our little problem. Well, I'd be glad to. Meanwhile, get rid of this pink atrocity, won't you? You're, uh, you're still sure it won't do, eh? Oh, dear, no. Uh, Why, I'd just as soon put Heppelwhite next to Chippendale. Oh, we couldn't do that, could we? Why not, Uncle? They don't speak. Oh. <laughs> well, well, I must be going now. Don't trouble to show me to the door. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Oh, our pretty pink bed, Leroy. Now I'll have to send it back. Too bad, Uncle Mort. Yes. Strange how many things there are in this world you could enjoy if only the experts didn't tell you they're no good. <laughs> Hey, Morris, wake up and help me. Here comes your brother. You who? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello, Sam. At least you could open your eyes, Morris. It's bad enough to have a pill for our brother, but I got to have one that's a sleeping pill. <laughs> What's this bed you're setting up, Frank? It's the one we brought back from Miss Gildersleeve's house yesterday. Oh, yes, be very careful with it. There's a rumor around that Washington slept in it. However, as of today, the rumor hasn't been verified. Sir, but I was looking for something in a bed. Uh, pillows, blankets, or sheets? <laughs> no, no, no. You don't understand. I want a bed for a young lady's room. Something colonial, shall we say? Sure. Let's say colonial. Colonial. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you'll just follow me, Junior Miss. Oh, oh, but one moment, please. What about this one that the men are putting together? Oh, that? <laughs> oh, don't give it a second thought. It's too old. It is? How old? Uh, 150, 200, who knows? Now, if you want to see some up-to-date, fresh from the factory colonial beds, I'm the man who's got them. Oh, no, never mind. This one is just the thing. Imagine a four-poster in such excellent condition. And a Duncan Fife at that. Uh, please, don't rush me. Remember, this is a genuine age in the wood Drunken Fife. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let me see. Hmm, $30. Well, I'm sure that I can use it at that price. I know just the spot where that bed will be right at home. Suppose you send it to my shop on approval. I'm Patricia Van Scudder, dealer in period furniture. I'm pleased to meet you. I'm Samuel Slapperman, dealer in furniture, period. Here's a telegram from Miss Marsh. Uh, are you sure? It must be. It came to let. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll soon see. Oh, Leroy. Uh, telegram for Marjorie. Yeah? What did she say, huh? 
Uh, regarding redecoration, before you dispose of old beds, be sure to unscrew the left front knob and fish out my string of pearls. What does she mean, Leroy? Oh, I remember. She sometimes uses the hollow bedpost as a kind of secret jewel box. Uh, Where are you going, Uncle Mort? In the Marjorie's room to unscrew the old great Caesar's ghost. That was the bed we traded in at Schlepperman's. <laughs> Getting those pearls out of the bed in Schlepperman's is a job that requires tact and delicacy. You're right, Uncle Mort. You wait here and I'll go in by myself. Yeah, wait a minute, young man. I'm going to do this job myself. If you care to, you can come along and uh, whistle if you see anybody coming. Okay. Any particular tune you want me to whistle? Well, no. I, I can just, uh, well... Uh, hello, Stranza. Hello, Leroy. Coming back for another bed? Hello, Slepperman. Uh, no, Leroy and I are just out window shopping. Oh, of course. What kind do you want? Plate glass, stained glass, or, or plate glass? Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand. Uh, Leroy and I just want to look around. Uh, you don't mind our browsing, I hope? Oh, no. I do a lot of that myself. You should see me browsing over a herring. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, uh, suppose I show you around. Oh, no, no, no. Don't trouble yourself. Ah, trouble, he says. Why, my time is your time. What's your time? 11.30. I, I mean, we can look around by ourselves. Oh, uh, let me show you. Yeah. Say, you might miss some of the little gems that are hidden around this store. Uh, quiet, Leroy. I wasn't going to say anything, Unc. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, but really, Sam, don't bother to come along. Uh, we'll feel uh, freer to... Uh... To help ourselves. Yes, that's it. We may dig out something we consider valuable if we're left alone. Yeah, at least we hope so. Yeah. All right. And if you find what you want, SOS me PDQ. And I'll be there in a flash for the cash. Yes. Flash for the cash. Come on, Leroy. Yeah. Are we out of sight? Yeah. Can you see it, Unc? Well, here's a four-poster. It... <laughs> but the knobs and the posts are solid. Here are some more, Unc. Okay, good. I'll be as quiet as a little... Oh, quiet. Oh, oh, that's me. <laughs> Say, how about this one? No, Leroy, leave it alone. This isn't Marjorie's bed. It's the wrong color, and it hasn't any posts. And besides, Morris is sleeping in it. There's Mr. Schlepperman coming this way. Good. Maybe I can pump him about it, huh? Oh, my gosh, I just smiling. Uh, oh, there you are. Yes, here we are. <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, Sam, you remember that old bed of Marjorie's you took in trade? Sure, what about it? Well, I was just wondering what had become of it. Not that I was looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Why, that bed sold like a hot cake. What? You sold it? What? You want it back? You... Well, sort of. I I got to thinking about it, Sam. You know, it was really Marjorie's. Yeah, and she put a lot of value in that bed. Uh, I didn't realize it myself until just recently. In fact, I never should have traded it into you. Well, if that's the case, maybe I can get it back for you. You can? How? Huh? The lady who bought it took it away on approval. Huh? Possibly if I go to her before she makes up her mind and somehow or the other raise the price, she might turn the bed down. Oh, that's great. How... I'll see that you don't lose on the deal, Sam. I know you can put it across. You do? I wish I did. Yeah. Do you want me to come along and help you? No, I think you might complicate the situation. You know, Trucky, in negotiations for antiques, it needs the cool, experienced head of an old hand with a near to the ground to put the best foot forward. Yeah. Schlepperman, come here. What can I do for you? Ah, uh, this is just a post driver's holiday, whatever it is, of course. Now that I'm here, I might as well inquire if you want to keep that bed you took on approval. Well, the young lady I'm buying it for is still out of town. Well, I've got a buyer who wants that bed right now. In fact, he says he'll pay up to um, $40 for it. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I hate to be pressing you, but could you give me a quick yes or no? Wait, I think I can get an answer for you right away. Excuse me, won't you? But certainly not. No, Marjorie isn't home yet. Oh, but I don't want Marjorie. This is Patricia Van Scudder, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I have the nicest news for you. Yes? I found just the bed for Marjorie's room. Well, isn't that nice? Yes. Wait till you see it. You'll be speechless. Well, I bet I'll find something to say. <laughs> now, the only thing is this. How much are you willing to pay? Uh, pay? Oh, anywhere up to 50, uh, 60, even 75. 
if you think it's worth it. Oh, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Goodbye. Well, Mr. Slepperman, I think we can do business. My client will pay more than that $40 offer you had. Is that a fact? Mm-hmm. Pardon me, uh, could you be so kindly as to let me use your telephone? Oh, surely. Go right ahead. It's in my office there. Thank you. I'll be back instantaneously. <laughs> Hello, Trucky. This is Slepperman. I've located that bed of Marjorie. Uh, you have? Good. But there has developed complications. Oh, what's the trouble? Uh, those people who have it now are willing to pay a good stiff price, maybe $50, $60. Well, I'll give you more than they will, the crooks. Whatever that bid is, I'll pay $10 more. As high as, say, uh, $100. All right. You're the doctor. Goodbye, Doc. <laughs> well, Miss Vinskuda... I just talked to my client, and he says he'll pay $50 for that bed. Oh, but my people won't let him take it for that. They'll give 60 60 is a nice price. But this fellow so is no cheapskate. He says 70 My clients are just as stubborn as yours. We say 75 I'm sorry, but my man will top their offer 85 Well, Freddy's got us licked. Too bad. They'll be disappointed. Well, you can send your truck over to pick up the bed whenever you want to. Oh, I don't have to do that. Hey, Frank! Yes, Mr. Make up, Mars, and come in here. George Washington's bed rides again. <laughs> Be careful, boys. Put it down easy. There you are, Mr. Gildingsleeve. Safely and soundly. Yes, well, thank you very much, Lee Sam. <laughs> now, if you and your men will wait outside for just a moment. Yeah, precisely. Come on, boys. Yeah. Ah, uh, at last, Leroy. Gee, which knob is it, Uncle? Yeah, the left front one. Ah, I've got it. Here's something. By George, it's the missing pearls. Boy, what a relief. Say, now that you have the jewels, what are you going to do with the bed? Maybe Mr. Schlepperman will buy it back. Oh, that's silly, Leroy. He, he just went to an awful lot of trouble persuading somebody to let me have it. Say, I've got to thank him about that. Uh, oh, Sam, if, I want you to know that I appreciate all the trouble you've gone through to get this bed back for me. Uh, thanks very much. Oh, yeah, don't mention it. It was a mere trifle, on a big scale, of course. Yes. I was really up against a determined woman. For a little while, it looked like I'd have to kidnap it. Uh, kidnap it? Is that so? Well, I wonder if she still wants the bed. Oh, yes. Why, if I walked into her place right now with that bed, she'd cover me with kisses. Heavens forbid. <laughs> well, in that case, why not let her have it? Excuse me, I don't think I heard you right. Did you say let her have it? Yes, I didn't realize she wanted it so badly. I don't want to be so selfish about all this. Well, I'll be a dog in the manger. Yes. After all I've been through, too. Guilty? If you sell it again, what will Marjorie say when she finds out? Oh, don't worry. That's all fixed. Someone has found a bed that'll make her forget all about this one. Well, that's fine. I'll take it back to the other party. Yeah? Oh, Frank! Oh, Morris! Yes, boss? What is it, Sammy? What I want? Go get the bed and put it on the truck again. But we're taking it apart and put it together four times already. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Say, what do you want me to do? Install zippers? <laughs> go, go, go. Uh, I'm sorry to give you all this trouble, Slepperman. What well, trouble? This is a dandy bed. I've done more business with this one single article this week than I have with all the rest of my stock put together. <laughs> Miss Van Scooter, I've got a surprise for you. Who is it? Oh, Mr. Supperman, what is it? Do you remember that lovely George Washington flute bed? Well, I had to talk myself blue in the face, but I got it back for you. You did? Oh, you little dear, I could kiss you. Oh, please, please, I'm a married man. <laughs> Do you want the bed? Oh, yes. Then everything is peaches down in Florida. You mean in Georgia? Ever been to Florida? Oh, Frank. Oh, Morris. In again. Oh, there it is. Won't Marjorie Forrester be pleased when she gets this bed? Why, yes, of course. Uh, what? Are you giving this bed to Marjorie Forrester? Oh, no. Oh, that's good. I'm not giving it to her. Her uncle, Mr. Gildersleeve, is... You don't mean by any chance Trotmorton P. Gildingsleeve? A large, deep man with a thick voice. 
Why, yes. Are you a friend of his? Speaking strictly from the past, yes. <laughs> well, the next time I see him, I'll tell him I met you. I don't think that'll be necessary. <laughs> He'll know it. Well, goodbye, Miss Van Scooter. And if you don't see, if I don't see you again, don't take any more wooden beds. Ah, it's been a lovely day, hasn't it, Leroy? Yeah, makes a man glad that he's alive. Yeah. Anything happen while we were out, Bertie? Nothing, only that Van Scudder lady's in Miss Marge's bedroom with some furniture. Huh? Hmm. Wouldn't let me get anywhere near it. Claims it to be a surprise for you. Oh, yes, the new bed. Well, I'm anxious to see it, Bertie. She says it's going to bowl me over. Gee, maybe it's all ready now. Come on, Uncle. All right, come along, Bertie. Yes, sir. You're making so much fuss over that bed, you'd think George Washington slept in it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, just a second. It's almost ready. There. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, yes? I want you to see the room properly. Ready? <laughs> this better be good. Yes, I'm ready. Close your eyes. Yes. Now, I'll count three, and then you can open them. One, two, three. Well, it's very... <laughs> I don't get it, lady. Don't get bored. This room looks just like it did before. I know, but the bed. That's the one I had so much trouble buying for you. But that's... Oh, my. Yes, that's the same bed that was there in the first place. Oh, no. I picked this bed up at a tremendous bargain, $150. Oh, great jumping jeeps, $150. But, but it's absolutely authentic. George Washington slept in it. Oh! Oh! Hey, you fat old fella, lady. The oh, hurricane is here. No. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Come on, come on. Calm down, Uncle. Yes. After all, you got back Marjorie's valuable pearls. Yes. What's all this talk about Miss Marjorie's valuable pearls? There's nothing but imitation pearls. What? No, oh, that makes it all the worse. I'm getting dizzy. Leroy, bring me a chair. Come on, here. Sit down on the bed, Uncle. Yeah. Yeah, let me help you over. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> what's this big lump under the bedspread? <gasps> Morris, you get out of here. Huh? All right, all right. The great children's slave will be with us again in just a moment. But right now, I think you men especially will agree that the evening meal is a mighty important event. Yes, after coming home in the cold from a hard day's work, plenty of steaming hot food on the table is certainly a welcome sight. Well, men, you need good food. It replaces the strength and energy you've used up during the day. That's why you should be sure there's plenty of energy food on the table. Energy food like parquet margarine, made by Kraft. You see, parquet margarine is one of the best sources of food energy you can serve, made from American farm products. And parquet is also a reliable food source of vitamin A the year round. Yes, every pound contains 9,000 units of this important vitamin. And parquet margarine is so downright good tasting, it's bound to be a hit with all the family. So men, why not ask your wives to try delicious parquet margarine? They'll find it's grand for table use. A real flavor shortening for baking, too, and just about perfect for pan frying. Yes, ask them to order parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's the margarine made by Kraft, that tastes so good, yet costs so little. Ladies and gentlemen, our president will soon reach his 60th birthday. We can all help him celebrate. We can show him our deep regard and affection by contributing to a cause that's very close to his heart, your local fight infantile paralysis campaign. Let's all say happy birthday, Mr. Roosevelt, by aiding the fight against this enemy of our children. Good night. Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.